So this has been a pretty popular topic today. There is a new game that's been called Deadlock. Uh, this is something that uh, senior editor, we played Valve's secret new shooter, Deadlock. Well, nothing says it's a, sh a secret like um, taking screenshots of it and posting them publicly on your website with ads all over it. Uh, so yeah, early development build. Deadlock is still early in development with a lot uh, of temporary art and experimental gameplay. Do not share anything about the game with anyone. Wow. Well, I think somebody didn't follow the directions. It's a secret, bro. Stop telling everyone. Yep, there you go. Do not share. <clears throat> and a lot of people are mad uh, that that this happened, right? And this is the match, and this is, I guess, somebody who posted. Is this the guy's article? I don't know. But this is the footage here, and you can see, obviously, it's, you know, kind of like an Overwatch-style game, etc. Um, you know, I never clicked the button, so I don't really feel bad for showing it. But, um, yeah, this is clearly what it looks like, and a lot of people are pretty positive about it. Uh, it seems like the game is being pretty well received. Obviously, it's not ready yet. That's why they tell people not to talk about it or post about it. So, yeah, that's basically, it's another Overwatch. Yeah, will your Steam account get banned for talking about it? No, they're not going to ban people's Steam accounts for that. It's crazy. At least I don't think so. So, basically, this is what's happened. They're explaining the way the game is, and uh, a lot of people are mad at Tom for this. Congrats, Tom, you just got community noted. And so, it says the game's in early development, everything is work in progress. The author blatantly ignored an informal NDA, asking them not to share any information about the game, and thus was justly banned from the playtest. So, he did, he, and then there's a the little salute there, this is what I did. Yeah, we want a new game, not a copycat. And so let's go ahead and take a look at this. And no, I'm not under NDA. I've signed no contracts. I made no verbal agreements. I haven't even clicked through the EULA. Really? Okay. Well, that's nice. So, <clears throat> August. Turns out Val was not fine with me trying Deadlock with friends. I have been banned from matchmaking. Oh, well. Please feel free to make fun of me in the comments. How are you going to act like you're a victim here when you literally went and I, I don't understand, like I can, I, I get doing it, right? You're doing it because you want to make money. Sure. But you shouldn't act like this is a surprise or they, they and, and this is, this is another example of like why people don't like journalists. I've been banned. Valve was not fine with me trying Deadlock with friends. This is why people hate journalists. It's because every single person knows that that's not the reason why you were banned. You were not banned because you were trying the game with friends. You were banned because you posted an article about it and you showed a bunch of gameplay with something that they were trying to hide. Now, here's another opinion that is contradictory to that. Valve is, uh, Valve is stupid for putting a game like this out there to the public with no vetting process and then expecting nobody to leak anything about it. Like, it's it's so stupid to put something like this out there and expect nobody is going to leak it. I personally think they did think that people were going to leak it and they want people to leak it to create a sense of... Uh, of exclusivity. Right? Like, oh, wow, this is some secret game, etc. Right? I think they're doing it on purpose like this. It's like a five-head PR move. That's what I think they're trying to do. Let me go back. I'll go ahead and look at the uh, the responses of this, too. <clears throat> Very cool of all the journalists rallying around unprofessionalism and hiding the replies with criticism. When a YouTube dover does it, condemn it. When a journalistic value does the same thing, uh, what journalistic value does this provide when Valve made you agree to the text before uh, playing? Well, let me explain what the journalistic value is. I'm going to go ahead and just open up a page here. And uh, we're going to look at where the journalistic value is. So, the jur let, me, let me circle the journalistic value. It's right here. And you can see it. Uh, I, I put an arrow to it so you guys can't miss it. So the journalistic value here is very clearly because they get paid for it. They're making money off of this. And that's why they want to do it. They're doing it explicitly for money. Valve doesn't do NDAs because they like working with trust. They're pro-consumer. Well, the, Valve does do NDAs. I guarantee you that people have signed NDAs with Valve. 
it's just that like customers don't do that in a different way. Like, you really think Valve doesn't do any NDAs? I mean, come on, every company does NDAs. You have to if you're a tech company. <clears throat> That's why they'll no longer exist in a year or two. Yeah, of course. And so, if I look and see this myself, but they're just not doing NDAs like mass NDAs, which I think is very different. And I think that makes sense. Literal first thing that appears when you open deadlock message is requesting that you don't leak any of the alpha. This is an absurdly unprofessional move by The Verge here, but anything for the first scoop. That's exactly right. And so everybody is really mad at them for this. Um, you, you can't test games like Deadlock without big data. Yeah, sure. It's already closed beta with a uh, friend invite. How do you think Valve kept Half-Life Alex a secret for so long? Well, I mean, here's... Look, look, let's not... It doesn't, that doesn't matter. The point is that... If you're writing articles and posting a bunch of stuff like this, what does this do for the environment? I think that a lot of games journalists like to present themselves as being above uh, influencers and content creators and YouTubers, right? They're like, well, we have a higher standard of ethics and behavior. And when you post things like this, you immediately destroy that credibility. And you have no leg to stand on and you have no way that you can say that you're better than anybody else when you're doing actually the thing that even YouTubers wouldn't even do. They are the respected source. Yeah, you're no longer respected when this happens. And I'm, I'm really glad to see this happen, whether it's with this, with Wukong, or any of the other ones, where these uh, the, the public is made aware that these journalists are no different than a YouTuber. They're doing the exact same thing. And in fact, oftentimes they're worse. That's why they're losing their market share. Very unprofessional journal movement, how YouTubers can be trusted with early versions of games years in advance, but actual publications break embargoes and then get banned. Well, it's because they think that they have the moral authority. That's the reason why, is that games journalists, and this is the issue, is that games journalists... So here's the developer, right? And then here's the here's the publisher. Uh, sorry, I, I I didn't plan this out ahead. Okay, um, this is the journalist, right? So this is the way it actually works. But what games journalists think works is that they think that they're here. They think that they're on the same level as the developer, but they're not. The games journalist exists. Because the developer allows them to exist. They're not, you're not on Valve's level. That's not the way it works. That's why pride is a sin. Classic. Yes, this is exactly why pride is a sin. I can't tell you the last time I trusted a gamer journal review for a review. Gamer journal for a review. Yeah, exactly. And so these people think that they are somehow elevated beyond like a YouTuber or beyond like uh, an individual content creator. And in fact, I think the case has become that they're below them. But they have like this moral authority that I think makes so many other people uh, angry. The problem is there's no standard to becoming a journalist. A lot of other standard journalism, at least back in my day, you go through a lot of training and learn integrity and professionalism. Well, at the end of the day, like... A lot of that stuff matters in cases where you're talking about, like, a news story because you're protecting identities of people and things like that. But this is usually just people talking about video games, right? So, like, a lot of those integrity things don't really matter a lot to the user in the same way that they would whether you're writing a story about, like, somebody in Witness Protection Program or something like that, right? For example, LOL. People wonder why most gamers don't trust journalists. Yeah, there you go. If gaming journalists act like this all the time, then go get another job. Why Valve Software banned them. This is what I would do if I was Valve. I would just simply not, like, not give them any early access review copies for anything at all. I would blacklist them. Because, like, you have to, uh, you have to set an example with people like this. Because if you don't, then other people will think that it's okay. Because here's one thing that's undeniable. Is that this guy... Tom Warren has made money because he wrote this article. And I think he's probably made more money with this article than he has with probably the last 10 articles that he's written put together. So what you do, if you don't make an example out of people like this, 
you create a profit incentive for them to uh, degrade your product. And so you have to do that. Isn't that access journalism? It's not access journalism because this person actively went against an agreement that they made with the, with the publisher or they made with the uh, developer. So like basically they entered into an agreement and then they broke the agreement knowingly. They knew that it wasn't supposed to be shown and they did it anyway. So access journalism is generally done when a person didn't do anything wrong, but they're trying to just cover it in an authentic way. But this person did do something wrong because they actively broke a rule. Wasn't that a gotcha? No, it's not a gotcha. I think that that one was okay. Can't the developer sue them for this? Probably not. Also, it might be a bad take, but I don't think journalists should get access to the alpha. No, I think that you should give journalists access to the alpha. You should also give content creators access to it. I think that it's fair to give press and people like that access because a lot of them might have good insight. So it's not a bad idea to do that. It just means that it, they, they're not the only ones that should get access. Average players and professional players and everybody inside of the spectrum should be given access. That's the best way that you, that you conduct a test. Anybody knows somebody in the game that can get access? I have access? Yeah, I'm sure I could get access too if I wanted it. But yeah. And so, yeah, I think this definitely... Um, like, if I was a developer, think of it like this. Let's say you're developing a new game and you want to show it to a few people in the press to have them write an article about it. Would you trust... Would you trust The Verge more or less after this article was written? The answer, obviously, is no. Absolutely not. And if I was, let's say, Square Enix or Capcom or Blizzard, would I want to give these people uh, special previews after this? No. And the reason why is not access journalism. It's because these people actively refuse to listen to what the agreements with the games are. This is a totally different thing. Was the answer to your question? Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I've, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. But yeah, is Verge on the verge of collapse? Well, you want to find out? Let's go ahead and take a look at it, the same as we did with the other ones. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, not so good, huh? It was a lot better in 2013, 2020 even. Journalism is dying? Well, that's because it's no longer journalism. The reason why journalism is dying is because journalists have killed it. They've killed it by becoming activists and doing it under the guise of journalism. The only people that you have to blame for journalism, quote, dying, are journalists themselves. They're the ones that have co-opted these platforms that are supposed to be uh, you know, a platform for information and they've turned it into propaganda. That's the reason why. Journalism is basically the uh, mouth of the Democrats. I do think that it's universal that all of them have the same progressive viewpoints and none of them progress, or sorry, um, none of them present any viewpoint that's contrary to that. And I think that's one of the reasons why people resent them and don't like them. Journalism is propaganda? Yeah, and I think that it's very obvious uh, that, that it's happening now. Public companies are to blame. Um, yeah, I think that you're right about that. That's a really good point, is that a lot of the reason why this happens is because these companies are publicly traded. And uh, because of that, uh, ethics and integrity are uh, sidelined for, for money. I think that's a good point. Why are you ignoring Republican journalism? Uh, is, this an, uh, is this an actual question? No, I, I think that you're just trolling. Uh, that's fine. Uh, journalism isn't dying. Bad journalists are getting fired. Well, the entire companies are falling apart. That's what's happening. Back in the day, publishers required two sources to publish. Now they publish first and worry about it later. They aren't journalists. I mean, classic open stream to ask a stupid question. Yeah, something like that. The graph was really good, though. Compare the Verge graph to Counter-Strike or Blizzard. I think it's just the waters of journalism have been muddied so much. It's impossible to find a journalist not covered in mud. Here's the reason why people don't trust journalism and why they don't trust journalists. It's because journalists report on things that are too much in intertwined with their own personal views. And all journalists have the exact same personal views. All of the mainstream uh, journalists that are in like the good graces of all the big companies, 
they are all super left wing and they all support the exact same agendas. You know, like the desexualizing, uh, you know, characters in video games. Game science, the people that made Wukong are sexist. Uh, video gamers are racist. Uh, you can't remake Resident Evil 5. They all have the exact same cookie cutter, like copy paste opinions. And that's the reason why people don't trust them. It's because, like, these opinions are not the opinions of an average person. An average person doesn't have this problem. They do. And then they make it the average person's problem by writing articles about it, assuming that we'll care. And we don't care. They are influencers, but the influence is limited. That's what they, uh, yeah, it's what gets people to click, unfortunately. Well, it's also what their viewpoints are, too. The linchpin for Gamergate, gamers are dead on publications, 20, uh, 20 publications all within a few hours of each other. Exactly. Why are you ignoring my favorite Republican journalist conspiracy blog? Yeah, clearly, right? Uh, but no, there's definitely people. Well, the reason why I'm uh, why I'm ignoring them is because they don't have the good graces of the companies and they're not employed by large companies. So it's a matter of the fact that they exist, but they're not mainstream. And I think the problem is the fact that they are mainstream. So there's no right journalists or right media. No, that's not what I'm saying. So um, what I'm saying is that, for example, if you look at like all of the main gaming publications, they all have the same viewpoints. And those viewpoints are the only viewpoints that are represented in any sort of a mainstream media publication. So the fact that there are other publications that don't have that viewpoint is true, but those publications are demonized, slandered, uh, lied about, and also not mainstream. And companies don't work with them as much. So that's the reason and that's the difference. It's that one type of viewpoint is... Uh, is accepted and the other one is not. It's not about gaming, but media in general. Oh yeah, it is media in general. But I think gaming, uh, gaming journalism is like a, a little microcosm that is easy to look at because you can see all of the pieces in it because it's small. Dr. Disrespect deleted this post on X. I saw that. But yeah. Isn't there a video of the 50 news station reporting the same thing word for word? Yeah, but they're probably just copying each other. It was always like that. Now we have alt media on left and right instead. And they're a thousand percent worth on every fact. Yeah. Because this is not true in general news media. Um. Uh, I think, it, yeah, yeah, you're right. We do have Fox News. No, you're definitely right about that. But here's something that I would argue. And you want to hear somebody else who argued this. Who I, I very much agreed with on this point. Is uh, Hassan's uncle. Cenk Uger. Whenever he was on, uh, I think it was MSNBC or ABC is that even inside of the dichotomy that mainstream media provides, there are still unacceptable opinions. And that Overton window is a lot smaller than people might see. So even whenever you're on one of those big news publications, you, you still you have the right opinion or the left opinion. You don't have your opinion. There's two opinions instead of one. Just because there's two doesn't mean that it's a free marketplace of ideas. It means that everybody is corralled into one or the other. Yeah, it, yeah, get a Kanye opinion. Yeah, yeah, well, you don't have a lot of Kanye opinions, etc., right? Voting machine on Fox? Yeah, well, they lost that lawsuit. I mean, I'm not surprised they're not talking about that one anymore, right? So, yeah. Don't worry, they're very much about AI going to take up their job as well. Yeah. <clears throat> And uh, thank you. Try saying you support Russia's invasion of Ukraine on mainstream media and see how quickly you get blocked out. Well, I mean, try say that you support, um, you know, like uh, shooting cancer kids to the sun to get rid of them. Like, I mean, there are some things that aren't popular because people just don't like them. OK, so like, let's not pretend like that isn't the case as well. It wouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. We don't really hear a lot of that. So, I mean, not everything is in that dichotomy. Try saying you don't support Israel. You know, I'm not really sure how MSNBC and like a lot of the uh, like left wing uh, places. I don't really like because in my opinion, I, I don't even want to get it. You know what? This is like super politics. Like, I, I don't know. OK, I'm going to get into it, but just for a second. How the fuck is it? that the fact that Israeli soldiers were raping people, how is this not 
front and center news in every left-wing publication for the next fucking month. We are funding and financing this, and then the population is angry about it? Holy fuck. It's like it didn't even it cover up. Yes, like I actually, I, I want to research this so I can give you guys the real truth about it. Because I feel like nobody's talking about this. Nobody's looking into this. This is insane. Yes, I, it, it makes me fucking furious. It's a new thing. Imagine if another country had been doing that. Let's. I'm not going to know specific country. Imagine if another country had been doing that. You're actually saying it. Yes, I am. It's true. It, it, it's disgusting. Yeah, I wonder why. Both sides had allegations of it. Yeah, but there's a difference. We're not sending... Pa oh, we are sending Palestine. Well, I mean... Look, there's a reason why I want to play Metal Gear Rising, okay? So, yeah, of, of course, well, I mean, you know. However, um, it, it's it's not like we're really doing it openly, right? It's, it's a little bit different. So, yeah, both sides are like, yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, you know, it's like one side is like publicly acceptable, the other one isn't in the same way, right? So I, I find it to be very problematic. I do. I think it's extremely problematic. Um, anyway, let's move on.